to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I wanted to discuss some more uh, brands that are really underappreciated that I think you guys should pay more attention to. And in today's watch market, if it ain't Rolex or Paddock, basically you're not getting attention. Maybe FP Journe. So I think uh, it's a good idea, and I've made videos like this before, where I bring up a few watch brands that maybe you should consider. And I'm sure you know who these brands are. You've probably heard of them before, but maybe you don't know why you should give them a look. Of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing the Omega Speedmaster Limited Edition. I haven't worn this watch for over two months. Is it on the right time? Yep, it is. And um, I don't know, I was looking at my watch box today. I'm like, why haven't I been wearing this? And I picked it up, and I think I'm going to roll with it for a couple of weeks. Also, another announcement, ton of cool more watches on DelrayWatch.com. We got a Jaeger La Coltra, a Reverso 976 with the clear case back a Seiko Marine Master Spring Drive watch, another solid gold Rolex under $4,000 with a really cool, uh, what I call, brick dial, and a Zenith Elite Dual Time. All that plus an H. Moser Henry double hairspring that's like 75% off retail. It's a crazy price. It's one of the most complicated watch movements out there. Real hot horology, and that is well under... Uh, or just under $10,000. I really think you guys should go check it out, uh, and especially look at the case back shot. All that and more at DelrayWatch.com. And actually, since I mentioned the Moser, I think the first brand I have to talk about that's very underappreciated is H. Moser, a completely independent company uh, that was purchased by the Milan family, and uh, they make uh, only the best of the best. I mean, they're up there with Kerry Voudelainen, F.P. Journe, Roman Gautier. I mean, these guys are completely in-house. They make uh, very interesting complications, moon phases, perpetual calendars. But more interestingly, uh, did you know they are one of the only companies in the entire world that makes their own hairsprings? Yeah, guys, that's right. Most companies don't make hairsprings. It's one of those parts that's really hard to make. And H. Moser actually owns a subsidiary company uh, that produces these hard-to-make watch parts, and one of them are hairsprings. In fact, as I said, the Henry Double Hairspring is a watch with two hairsprings, which is super cool. I also like the fact that they make very few watches, less than 3,000 watches a year, and their CEO, uh, their CEO Edouard Melan, is a young... Uh, guy, you know, he's uh, he's definitely under 40 or just about 40, which for the Swiss watch industry is unheard of. Very, very passionate. He does um, great marketing um, marketing ads for his uh, for his company, kind of like the, the Swiss Alp watch and the Swiss Mad watch made out of Swiss cheese. I mean, they're a company that not only makes fantastic high horology watches, but they also don't take themselves entirely too seriously, which is great to see in such a stuffy industry. Not to mention pre-owned, these watches can be had for quite a bit of a discount right now, uh, but I think that's going to change. I think this is going to be the new hot independent watchmaker, uh, kind of like F.P. Journe. Maybe not right now, but it will be in the future. That's my prediction. I really love the brand. You should definitely check them out. That's H. Moser. Next, we go on the other end of a spectrum, a great entry-level brand that almost nobody talks about, including myself, and that is Mido. Mido, a brand owned by the Swatch Group, um, you know, placed just above Hamilton, but right below Longines, um, you know, and also just above Tissot, I think, as well. Much more popular in Europe than in America, but these guys make truly beautiful dress watches. The new Baroncelli is absolutely stunning. Uh, beautiful dress watches that can be picked up well under the $1,000 mark. Now, yes, some of them are gold-plated, and you guys know I don't love the plated watches, but you can pick them up in stainless steel. They use um, the Swatch Group movement, so ETA and modified ETA, so you get a very, very solid watch, but more importantly, you get something with real attention to detail in the design. I truly think Mito makes some beautiful watches, and yes, I wouldn't recommend picking up their higher-end pieces, because once you hit those price ranges, you can uh, go into something 
a little bit um, more special. But I think if you need a dress watch and you need to spend under that $1,000 price range, Amido Baroncelli is fantastic. And more than that as well, they make some great racing-inspired chronographs. It's just a brand that no one ever mentions. And even though they've come out with press releases with their new product, which is really beautiful and was received very well, it just hasn't been enough to propel them uh, into their five minutes in the spotlight. I really think, even though it's a guy, it's a brand most of you guys may write off, they do make quality watches. I think you should go to their website and just, you know, peruse it for five minutes. You'll be pleasantly surprised. And this is not sponsored at all. I was pleasantly surprised as well. And then third is a brand that every watch geek knows and uh, is becoming a lot more popular, but not a lot of people are actually buying them. And that is Zenith, the makers of the El Primero, the world's first fully integrated chronograph, automatic chronograph. The Caliber 11 was made before that, but uh, that was a modular design. Now, of course, everybody knows the El Primero, but guys, did you know Zenith, a company which is entirely in-house, by the way, all their movements are in-house, did you know they have an entire different line of watches called the Elite? Uh, these are using the elite caliber movements, ultra thin time only movements. Some of them have complications like a GMT or a world time or a big date. But Zenith is a lot more than just the El Primero. I mean, if you just compare like a, at a 2892, which would be put in, in, in a comparable watch to a Zenith uh, Elite or a Zenith Captain, the Captain has an ultra thin decorated movement. It's a much more complicated movement. It's a much more beautiful movement. You know, the El Primero is high beat. The, um, the Elite is not, but that's not necessarily a bad thing for a workhorse. But you've got a company that's fully integrated, fully in-house, all pedigree. And while everybody may know the El Primero, I don't think people give enough love to Zenith's other line, particularly the non-chronograph versions. You know what? If I told you to go check out Mito's website, definitely go check out Zenith's website. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised as well. Now, of course, the El Primero is fantastic. It was used in the iconic Rolex Daytona. You also have the iconic tricolor El Primero. It's the high beat chronograph movement uh, that's in house. It's you know well loved by by watch enthusiasts. But that's not all the brand is, and I just wanted to bring that to uh, to the forefront. Anyway, guys, those are just a quick three brands that I want to talk about today that if you haven't visited or looked at their current offerings, you definitely should because you will see they really make some cool stuff. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of Federico Talks Watchers. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help. And of course, check out DelrayWatch.com. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.